walking stick handle today. <laughs> That's what we're doing. <laughs> Not dissecting things. So I had to we'll uh, dissect this dead cow skin. That's yeah, that's accurate. Right? Yeah. It's dead. It's it is alive. dead. <laughs> Another dead thing for us to dissect. So my my friend uh, Brian uh, from high school hit me up, and he's like, "Hey, oh, back to high school." Uh, yeah, back to high school. See, this yeah, all see, comes this around. This is all coming around. <laughs> so he hit me up, and he's like, "Hey, will you wrap a walking stick for my son? His birthday's coming up." So this is actually the walking Did stick, that. Brian. So, but we're gonna do another one so we can teach you how to do it. And then another friend from high school hit me up named Jill, and she's like, yeah, I would love to see that. So hopefully that's how this video watching. came apart. So hopefully, well, yeah, hopefully you guys are watching. So, all right, I'll lay this over here. So we actually have a really awesome person that is local to us. I don't... His name is David. His name is David. Creation Carvings. Yeah. And, and he's on Facebook and Instagram. And We buy some fun walking sticks. Yep. Does he also do our mushrooms? Yeah, yeah, okay. he does much. So we, we carry yeah. these adorable little antlers that he's carved into morels, which are really, really sweet. So yeah. if you're ever on retail and you need a morel mushroom keychain, as we all do in life. Oh, I don't know about you that. You should pick one of those up. Does he do that? Maybe he Somebody does. does. I know he carves antler, but we have them. He has yeah. morels on walking sticks, too. So. I, think I think it's David. Yeah, it might be David. Hey, Maybe David, guess what? David, I'm sorry. You're, you're carving antlers now. <laughs> <laughs> all uh, right, yeah, so we've got Fun Wizard. Yeah. You guys... You want to do the overhead here, Tony, for me? Anthony? Anthony, there you go. Look at that guy. Look at that. I think he's out bearded our grim beard next to us. He's got he's got like another foot or so on you, Andrew. What? I think. Ooh. Oh, competition. Now, you, now you're doing the video by yourself. Competition with the wooden stick. You don't diss the beard, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> I just said you got you got some time. That's it. <laughs> you can keep going. <laughs> In any case, so we've got We've got this fun guy. We're going to put handle around him and then make yeah, a little fun bag to put all of the so, things that you might find on your journey. This was just something I I came up with. Um, on the bottom of the handle wrap, if you attach just a little clip or a D-ring or something, then we can make a bag out of a, a circle and some eyelets. And I put some eyelets in the bottom, too, to tie it to the stick. So it doesn't swing around. Yeah. So Which you can is, walk around and put like, your rocks like in Like you it think and... that it's going to. I kept yesterday thinking, I was like, oh, this is just going to hit me. Like, but it doesn't because it's face. Yeah. Yeah, especially if you put rocks in it, it weighs it down, too. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. Sweet. First step is to cut out a circle for the pouch. This is a 12-inch circle, and we had a die for it. If you don't, you can use a compass. Um, use a plate. I've used plates before. You just lay it on the leather and like, draw a circle. This plate good enough. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't have to be size. 12 inches. It's a good size. So. Whatever size you want to use. But we'll do the handle wrap first, and then we'll come back to the pouch. So, All righty. Oxford Excel. Yes, so we've yeah. got the, the natural. I think so. I don't know. Antique tan. Antique I am corrected. Tan. Antique tan and the five to six ounce are beautiful, beautiful Oxford Excel here. Man, this stuff is gorgeous. Yeah, it is nice. So, so basically, we just need to cut a piece off that's a rectangle. So, are you going to cut a rectangle? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm going to cut a chunk off of this just to. I'm going to estimate. So it doesn't have to be anything crazy. All right, now we can get rid of this. Cool. All right. So generally what I do with these, I, uh, I'll i take uh, one of our L rulers. Is that what you call these things? It's a square. It's a square. That's hang fun. on just a second. Okay, we're hanging on just a second. Sean Palgrave in the UK is meeting all of my goals right now. He is watching on his Oculus Quest 2. Oh boy, <laughs> we're in 3D. I, Ooh. Oh my no, God. 360. I brought in my Quest yesterday, but I don't have it with me today. Ah. So I can't join him on the Quest. But anyway, shout out to Sean. Hi, Sean. <laughs> All right, carry on. Okay. So basically what we're doing is we're just making a rectangle with enough leather that will wrap around the stick itself. So if I hold this around here, that's more than enough. We're going to trim the sides off. Uh, because the stick isn't perfectly round, and it's kind of at a weird angle, we're probably going to have to trim this at a little bit of an angle on both sides, but I'll go over that. You know, this sounds vaguely like the uh, the horn rim, which yes, is also not is perfect true. and yeah. awkward. And <laughs> just trim. Yeah, I guess if you watch the uh, horn wrapping video, this is, this is, is pretty much the same. So. <laughs> figured out what it is. We Recycle. get Andrew in here to do all the weird shape stuff. That's right. It has nothing to do with your 
with my weird shape. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to work on our edges and, mm. and do all that jazz. Tend to just eyeball this stuff instead of marking it, but if you if you want to measure and go through all that, you can more power to you. But. I would say you could I for me and my OCD, I would probably <laughs> take a, a cloth tape measure and wrap it around here and get my circumference, and then um, um, yeah, and then I would know how long I need to idea. cut my piece of leather with a ruler. I wouldn't even have thought about that. Yeah, I just I just cut I into the leather. Blame, I just go for it. it. I, it's not like this is Oxford Excel or anything. All right. Couple it's cuts. more rustic that way. It is more rustic. Walking sticks are rustic. They are. Okay. So I've got my rectangle, and here's where you decide how long you want the hand wrap to be. There. You could make it longer. That way. Yeah. It's longer. Make a longer one. I like it longer. Yeah. Yeah, that'll lead up more time in the video with the hand stitching, right? Mm hmm. <laughs> So at this point, I will wrap it over the top of this, and that tells me about how much I need to cut off. And I'm just going to trim a little bit at a time. So right here, I just kind of make a little notch with my finger, fingernail, and I just cut it off. Again, doesn't have to be perfect because the stick is not perfect. And we'll come back. There's a hole through this too. Um, you can kind of see on the on the video, and that's for the uh, um, hand hold thing. I'm a bobber. A piece cord, of lace. The cord wrap. Yeah, yeah. the cord wrap. There yeah. you go. Sorry. <laughs> so we'll wrap this around here. Still got a little ways to go. I'm gonna take a little bit more off, and then we're gonna angle these things. All right. I know in the description we have what weight of uh, leather you're using, but can you mm -hmm. drop all that information again? So sure. the Oxford yeah. is the 5.6. And you could go heavier on that if you wanted. You might be able to go a little bit lighter, but I would keep it probably 5.6 or yeah. heavier. Yeah. Um, Especially with the stitching, because it'll tear through if you go anything lighter. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be a lot of tension there on the back holding everything together. So. Yep. And then for the bag, it looks like you... You cut it out of some of our cowboy leather, but then you split yeah. it down to what is that, two to three? Ooh, it's pretty thin. So yeah. I did it did it pretty thin there. So. Ooh, that is quite thin. Quite thin. So maybe it's probably like a three ounce for the bag. And really it's gonna depend on your leather. If you've got a leather that's nice and supple, you can have a five to six ounce pouch if you mm -hmm. wanted to. Um yep. if it's a little bit firmer, you might want to go thinner, like a three to four or something. It's really thin. We are right there on the cusp. We made it. This is a weird one because it goes, uh, it's fat here, skinny here, and fat here. So you're going to have to do kind of like an angle in on this. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. I had a sharper razor blade. There we go. Yeah, and this is just eyeballing. And if you screw it up, it's okay. You just cut another piece of leather. Or you just have a little bit of a gap. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Easy for you to say. All right, let's see where this goes. Hey, look at that. That's pretty darn close, I would say. We're going to call it. I think we're going to call it. We're going to have a nice little gap down there. Or you could just like cut this piece off and shorten your strap. But I think uh, once we start stitching it, it'll... Uh, so here's where personal preference comes in too. When you're doing a piece like this, um, if you want the um, like the the loop to match on both sides, you can do that because I've got a straight line here, and then I've got like this weird hourglass curve thing right here. Um, you can do it on both sides so it matches, but don't necessarily have to. Yeah. So now we are gonna bevel our edges. Now, Liz, do you do the top and the bottom? When you do this? Um, it depends on my application. For this, since it's sitting up against something, I would probably only do the top edge and leave the okay. bottom straight. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Hi, Kevin. Hey. Hello. Would you like to say Kevin's hello here. to the peeps? What are you doing? We're wrapping a walking stick. Made a little pouch for some rocks. Yeah. And... Well, yeah, of course. absolutely. No, you shan't not. That's right. You shan't <laughs> not enter our video. No. Actually, yeah. <laughs> 
You shall not pass. <laughs> I had to work that in there. Sorry. I have to be around strange people if That's I right. want to look. I'm not sure I want to do that. We're all strange here. Kevin, it's a requirement to work at your store that, that you be strange. You can come back here and get on camera if you want. You There's space say, back here. Come say hi to the world. That's the one that I made uh, a couple Hello, days ago. World. So. Uh, that's pretty cool. That's a nice stick. Yeah. Yeah. David with Creation Carvings makes those. He's out of Ozark. I was um, thinking you could uh, wrap one that I could beat my grandkids with. That would be kind of nice. I that's a custom grandkid yeah. beater. That's right. <laughs> it's not bad yet, Julia. <laughs> Hopefully they're not watching. So. Right. Kevin, it's going to have a rock pouch on it, so you can walk around and pick up more rocks. Yeah, yeah. That's, cool. that's a nice thought. I'll, I'll think about that. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Kevin. You see his nice new haircut? He and wore? he looked real fresh today. He looked pretty snazzy. Yeah, he did. He's looking good. All right, I beveled the edges. And now we need to token all them. So I'm going to let Liz token all them. Oh, cool. She is so good at edges. And then I can work on the pouch a little bit. Yeah. I'll get a question it? real fast from Angela. Huh. I'm just going to use burnishing cloth instead. Do you like burnishing cloth better in this look? I mean, it's easier to apply it and then I'll yeah. flick after I've gotten huh. it on there. Okay, cool. Right. Am I going to like dip this in here? Sure. <laughs> it's I've never done it that way before. But it's <laughs> How will these to get it off? I don't know. If you don't just use your finger. Oh, that's so, not what I do. So Liz got nervous and rolled this thing up, and now it doesn't lay flat, so I'm going to have to flatten this dark. out. That's a... Are you going to answer Angela's question? Oh, we have a question. Okay. Angela, came in late and leaving early. Any modifications if you wanted to make a similar wrap for a cane with the bend? Probably. I've never done a cane. If you're talking about the little uh, crook up at the top. Um, I would probably use veg tan and mold it. Yeah, maybe. Because then I you're going to get that stretch, and then you can kind of, like, squish it back in on the inside. Because your outside is going to need to be bigger than your inside. steering wheel? Yeah. We can. Yeah. yeah. So, we came up with an idea about wrapping a steering wheel. So, I think we're going to do a video on wrapping a mm -hmm. steering wheel. It is on a schedule. Guys, have a schedule for two months. Yeah. You should be so <laughs> proud of us. I'm really proud of If you of us. only knew. <laughs> Anyways. But... Yeah, so that might be a good one. Yeah, yeah, for doing like a loop, Angela, because uh, I've never done that before. But on a steering wheel, you're going to have a lot of a lot of curves there. So I don't know if you mm -hmm. need to do the leather different. I've never never done it before. But, uh. So these uh, for the pouch. I'm going to start on the pouch a little bit. Um, when you're doing a bag to cinch it up like this, I've done quite a few of these, and it's taken some trial and error. The way the eyelets uh, get positioned. If you have an even number of eyelets all the way around, your pouch will uh, tie properly in the front. If you have an odd number, you're going to end up with one string going inside the bag and one string going out. So, so rule of thumb, if you're doing a drawstring pouch like this, even number of holes. doesn't really matter where they're at on, on a round pouch like this, but... You got to divide by two. Even. Divide by two. <laughs> so I am using... Antique brass quarter inch eyelets that I just dropped on the floor. Um, so I'm using a quarter inch punch and then the quarter inch eyelets, which will go through and that'll give it some rigidity when I run the, the leather lace around and through the back. Mm. Generally what I do is I eyeball this as well. Um, this doesn't have to be perfect because the bag is gonna cinch up tight. You can measure it. You wanna measure it, Liz? Is no, it gonna drive no. you nuts? <laughs> <laughs> Because we're going to put a whole bunch of holes in this thing, so. So, I'm going to grab my hammer. And I kind of do opposites. So, if I punch a hole there, I go to the other side, and I punch a hole on that side. And you can go in as far as you want. Um, generally, we just need enough space for this eyelet to fit in there nicely like that. And then when we set the eyelet, it'll, uh, it'll be tight on the back. I may even drop this punch down a little bit from a quarter inch since this is such okay. a thin, soft leather. I don't want it to, uh, I can push the eyelet through and you want a good grip on the back of that. So, look at a 3 16 punch. We'll try that one. Yeah, when it comes to eyelets and grommet, you really want to gauge how stretchy your leather is. Um, and then maybe set a couple of test ones or at least a test one and, and see what is the smallest size hole you can get away with and cram that thing through because especially with eyelets you don't have a washer on the back of it no to no. to there we go. like with a grommet you've got that washer 
And that is going to be securing the grommet or like the eyelet portion together. But this is just hanging on to the leather. So you yep. want to make sure it's as <laughs> tight as possible. All right. What size diameter was your circle? Uh, the circle, the eyelets are quarter inch and then, this oh, 12 this. Inches. 12 inches. Yeah. Uh, about, diameter. about a dinner plate. One foot. Yeah, about a dinner plate. A serving platter. Somewhere close to 12 inches. <laughs> And as long as you do these opposite like this, and you're, um, you'll come out with an even number of, of holes when you're done. I think, maybe. I'm not good at math. I never went to high school. Wait, we started off with... <laughs> Seeing if you're paying attention. Seeing all these lies, <laughs> we were really unsure about That's whatever right. this... this worm thing was, we were like, are you sure that sounds like a big fib? And it's apparently it was, because he didn't go to high school, so he could never have dissected it's a creature <laughs> that he never... So my high school friends, if you're watching, do you remember dissecting anything in science class? You had to do it under a microscope, and you had the little he grew, scalpel. Grew and... his tail back. Yeah, he grew his tail back, or he cut his head off, and he grew another body. Maybe that's... Like not... I don't know. So we could stop here if we wanted to, or we could go even further and add more holes. What's wrong? That's good. That's great. No, it's driving you nuts, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because they're off and they're not even. So if you did want to do precise holes, what I would do is I would punch one hole and then I would take a wing divider at like an inch and I would just like go through and mark my center of getting the hole. Yeah. I like, I like rustic. It doesn't have to be perfection. We're all friends here. No, yeah, it's great. No, it's good. It's, it's, it's good? It's, it's do we want more holes? How far no, do we this have actually these apart? probably, I don't know. I think that'll work? Because you're work. gonna bunch. So, yeah. yeah, so these will bunch in. So this is probably fantastic. Okay, we're yeah, gonna no, I'm set so some happy with that. <laughs> I'm so happy with it. It's fine. See, I have a problem when the leather is flimsy like this, using the edge slicker, because it doesn't, it's not firm enough. Oh. So yeah, that's why I like canvas good. on the thing, because I can like really get in there. <laughs> I've worked out for the first time last night, and I like it's been like two months. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but my guns are dwindling. It's, so it says dwindling guns. <laughs> and this is like a chest day, and now a, you're really putting me to work here, Andrew. Yeah, that's true. Right. <laughs> it's tough. It's good. It's tough potato this morning. All right, my uh, my eyelets in that quarter inch hole, they just fall right out. So we might have a problem with those, but we'll find out. I'll just hit them harder, I guess. Well, I'm just adding all the eyelets in here and then I've got a little anvil um, that the eyelets will fit into and it makes it pretty easy to set. Um, these can be a pain in the butt just with the, the way that they flower out sometimes or they split on the back and- I was gonna, um, eyelets get pretty small. But mm -hmm. if you are using the quarter inch eyelet, Osborne's quarter inch grommet setter will set this. And those grommet setters are really? magical. But it's the only size that correlates. So eyelets huh. are quarter inch and smaller. Grommets are quarter inch and larger. Okay. So if you're using a quarter inch eyelet, you can use that fantastic Osborne setter. You it's kind of, uh, not here. No, we have no. one huh. in the shop. But Interesting. I just love, love their setters. They hold everything. You've got the base anvil that's got a hole in it. And then your setter actually mm. has a post that goes down into, like, through the eyelet, yeah. holds everything perfectly vertical, and then it just really Keeps just it rolls it out yeah. really beautifully. Mm. It's the most satisfying set of any hardware. And I'm sure I'll probably split one of these, so we'll be able to show you what, what we mean. Means. <laughs> Don't forget your hand. Yes. Yeah, good idea. So this is I've the I've done that a few times. Animal. You just flatten it right out. <laughs> like, well. Can you go to the overhead camera, Tony? That one's yeah. done. So this is the uh, this is the anvil, and it's kind of got a bevel in it that fits uh, this side of the eyelet. So it'll fit in there and just kind of sink into the side. And then this portion of the um, setter will fit into the top of that, and it rolls it, or it should roll it. Generally, it'll it'll split depending on how much pressure. And that's what Liz was talking about using the anvil. It will uh, yeah. help it not to split. Yeah. Or this, just because your leather is so thin and it's got a long way to roll, it might just split because yeah. um, of how far it's got to go. But So what I usually do, you want a very solid surface. If I do this, even with this anvil on the rubber, it's going to bounce back and cause you all sorts of problems. So you need either like a piece of marble, or if you don't have that, just a cinder block, steel plate, anything that's 
that's mm. sturdy. So. Cinder block. Maybe not cinder block. Yeah, it might shatter and explode. Yeah, so. yeah. But try it. Send us pictures. I use downward pressure on this when I'm set, setting it, and this is what it's supposed to supposed to do. It's supposed to great. roll like that. So, so that one's set pretty good. Here we go. Downward facing pressure. Downward facing pressure. It's, it's, it's the new yoga pose. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what is Liz's job at SLC? Andrew, what's my job? She is... Annoying. What is your job? <laughs> <laughs> Lil Fear, that's a good question. That's a... She does whatever she wants and goes wherever she is needed. I do whatever I need to do every day. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> whatever that might be. I think that's part of just being on the team of directors. It's just, it changes constantly every single day. So you're just bouncing all over the place. Yeah, I do whatever, whatever, I need, you need. Yeah. whatever yeah. needs to be done. Making sure the place runs smoothly is, is a big one. Yeah. I, I answer all the weird questions. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's really... Like, what do I do at Springfield Leather? That's yeah. Right. That's a good one. Nobody knows. All right, this is one of the weird holes that was too big. So this is a quarter inch hole. I'm going to see what I can do. Hey, it works. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Here's his response to what do you do here. <laughs> Yes, sir. That's uh, outstanding. Out talk Tony. It's a competition. That out we have. talks Tony. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I think I get more of an opportunity to. I'm almost done. Yeah. These none of these are splitting. No, nope, got some really good eyelids. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <clears throat> All right, last one. Watch it explode on me. That they downward pressure really, really yeah. did it. The downward facing dog pressure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the eyelets are, are set, so our pouch is good there. Um, let's move back to the uh, that piece, this the wrap. Okay. So next I'm going to take a wing divider, and I'm going to do my uh, um, hole punches. Oh, yeah. Good. <laughs> Denny did that um, in our last video. Did totally, really? Yeah, rounded a punch. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsies. We teach you about all sorts of stuff. That's right. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes it's about what not to do. Everybody needs to know that, too. Yeah, I just thought thought of something, too. Um, like, when I punch the holes here, I'm probably going to end up having more holes on this because there's a curve than on this one. But huh, You know what? I don't think yeah. it's extreme enough. I think yeah. it'll be okay. You think it'll be right? Yeah. All right. All right. So I'm using the, the hole punches that we sell here at Springfield Leather, the... Uh, Stitching chisels? What do you call these? Uh, stitching. It's a hole punch. It's not a chisel. Yeah, it's actually got a got holes in yep. them. So, I leave one of the. Uh, let's see if I can get this. There we go. So when I'm starting my stitch, I start one hole punch on the outside, and then the rest on the inside, and then enter the uh, last hole when I punch it. So, so I'm gonna just follow the line. So Tina asked what that whiteboard is. That is a white poly cutting board. We do sell them, but it is the same material. Like if you go to Walmart and those white cutting boards that you can buy for the kitchen, same yep. stuff. But that's what you want to punch into. So anytime you're using cutting tools that are punching through, um, you want to be using the poly cutting board on top of a piece of marble or granite or whatever your solid surface is. It doesn't work nearly as well when you're just on the surface. And, and the Poundo isn't great. The Poundo is great for when you're cutting with a blade because it'll kind of grip your stuff. But the poly board is actually better for your tools to cut into. It doesn't dull the blades. So. Yep. And it actually, uh, the stuff that you can get from um, like the kitchen store works great. That's what I use at home on my workbench. And we're pretty close to oh, the edge. Call it. Yeah. <laughs> We're pretty close to the edge on this uh, down here. So when you, that's another uh, thing. If you plan, you can mark out the holes. And um, so I've got a little bit of a gap there, but I think it'll be okay. Planning's for other people. Planning's for other people. We All right. Do. It's okay. When we do our knife sheath, we will plan. We'll plan the knife. Yes. <laughs> She's helping me with a knife sheath. Uh, We're going to plan. Yeah. I'm going to have to learn how to plan. So. What, uh, what color thread should we use? We got any... Uh, 
sky's the limit on this. I've got them all here. I got all the rhino threads. So somebody shout out a color. Shout it out while nobody no, shout watching. it out yeah. while, while nobody's, nobody's watching, watching the chat. chat. Oh yeah, he's over here. <laughs> Abigail is on the chat. White. White. That's my so what about a white. natural that matches this light part of the stick Ooh. here? Oh. Red. Yeah. Natural. No, I think there's there's like a million colors. I got a million colors. It's just red. like that natural. Red. All right, guys. I mean, red would do match the copper cowboy. Whatever you want. Red, yellow, black, green. Red. Red, white, green. All right. So we go about six times. Is that what you usually do for for thread? That's generally what I do. I go six times the length of what I'm stitching. You're going across. Yeah. Yeah. I, I usually do three times with my knife sheets, depending on how Natural. thick the weld is. Oh, that's not going to work. That's all the red thread I got. So I guess we'll step it down a little bit. I've got some deeper red. I have to, I'll have to rewind my bobbins. Yeah. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> he individually winds bobbins for his carrying case. Yeah. It blows my mind. It's fun. And then you have all these colors that you can choose from. When you get ready to uh, stitch your walking stick handle. Yeah. All right. I'm going to use some uh, harness needles. That's what they call them, or saddle needles. or Harness, yep. yep. And we sell these here in two packs, three packs. I'm using a small one because this is the .08 uh, rhino thread that we sell. So I could have gone smaller on the holes. Um, this particular one I use as a six millimeter punch. Um, I just wanted the holes spread out a little bit more than normal. Um, less stitching. Um, you can put them as tight as you want. We sell four, five, and six millimeter. And that's, that's just the distance, the distance between. Yeah, the distance mm -hmm. between the holes. The holes are all the same size. Yeah. Yep. Thread my needles. All right. And if I'll get with Angela later. It's generally what I will do, and we're not going to be able to do it here because I don't have my uh, um, my sanding machine to do it. Is I will sand a patch. Here and then I glue it to this, so it doesn't move. So it doesn't move, and it makes it really, really nice. So do you want me to go do that? Um, I mean, we could, or we could use basting tape if we've got basting tape. That'll work too. Okay. So, hey, sweet. There we go. <laughs> Just uh, confetti. There's still <laughs> confetti. <laughs> did you cut the lace out of like a lace maker, or did you just buy this lace for the bag? Mm -hmm. I bought it here. It's a I. Is this that Latigo lace? Yeah, this is Latigo mm -hmm. lace. Yep. We what they use before. for baseball gloves and stuff like it's super stout. Like it it will hold for sure. So. All right. So I'm gonna run this about the length of the handle, maybe just a little bit shorter. All we need is just enough for it to uh to stick to the But the glue isn't really or or like yeah, like sanding that patch mm -hmm. and gluing it because then yep. you're not gonna have to worry about as like you know, the the tape wearing down. Right. Um, or becoming unsticky, and then your handle sliding up and down. So that's exactly. that's a really exactly. that's a yep. good little tip. So now is the point if you uh, are doing these for production or you're wanting to sell them to put your your logo stamp in here, or if somebody wants initials, you can put initials here. You can make a design. If you do, with this would also be a really cool tooled yeah wrap. Mm -hmm. So at this point, it's the point of no return once we get this onto the stick itself. So uh, wrap that up there. Oh, look at that. And this is also a, a point where you can decide whether you want the stitching to show on the front or you want, which would be a grip. So so if I put the stitching here, your fingers are going to kind of curl around the stitching. It just kind of feels nice. I like that. And it also shows off a decorative stitch. Or you can just have a plain if there's a design on the front. So what do you think? I like the idea. That. Trisha wants to know, are you going to put the little clip on there for your bag? Or oh, you yeah, you should. Do that? you should do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course, that's what we're going to do. Thank you, Trisha. <laughs> Good catch. So. This is also the point of no return. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yes, that's, <laughs> that would have been a little <laughs> awkward, like, peeling that up. So. If you can cut thread, you we're, just have to stitch it. We're together. professionals here. <laughs> All right, so for this, I'm using a... Uh, um, a round end punch, and this is three quarter inch. So I'll I just grab a tab of leather or a strip of leather, and I'll punch the end here, and then I'll go down. How far did I go on this? 
like an inch and a half. Yeah, yeah, it's not too not too far. And I'll punch both ends and then I lay a ruler across where my two cuts are, or two uh or, there we go. Alright. And this will get the uh the strip made. Thank Andrew. you for letting me know about this. Josh says that your coloring is coming along great. I co oh, on my tattoo? Yeah. Yes. It's getting there. So I've got three or four more sessions, a whole bunch, maybe more. You never know. You never know. <laughs> It'll be done when it's done. It'll be done when it's done. But yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. So this, I'm just going where the uh, um, punch ended and just doing a straight line with a ruler. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. And that we just come out with the, the tab like this. So um, you can bevel and then uh, do your edges on this one too. I would have done that if we would have. Yeah, if I would have, but... I would have thought about it. You know, <clears throat> completely forgot. So using a uh, um, a swivel snap, um, a three quarter inch antique brass swivel snap, and I think they've got the the numbers for these. Uh, if not, if you're looking for it, it's zero two zero dash eight hundred eight zero five. Put that through here. Sure, it fits okay. It does. And then we're just going to punch a hole right in the end through both of these pieces and then through the bottom of our stick wrap. And that'll just attach underneath. You can put it on top if you want to. You could always do a little decorative piece up here if you want. Um, either way, whatever uh, whatever you desire. I'm going to get my hole punch. I brought some rivets with me too. Over here. Again, just eyeballing it doesn't doesn't have to be perfect. Unless you want it to be, then you can measure it out. Get my rivets, and these are just uh, small uh, double cap rivets. All right. Go over here. Oh, we need to punch the hole in this. So we determined what our to. don't have to. No, just, <laughs> just keep rolling hole. with it. <laughs> so so wherever you want this to, to be in the center, we're gonna hang it right about there and you know, just mark a little bit, make sure it's centered for the most part. You're not gonna notice if it's uh, centered or not once it's wrapped around the stick, um, but just get as close as you can with it. So. All right. We'll put our rivet through the top piece first. And then I'm sliding these pieces through. Pretty straightforward. Just putting it uh, putting it through the leather. You can too uh skive down the uh the ends of these yeah. a little bit if you wanted to to make it thinner. Um that way it doesn't bulge out as much. That's what I did on uh on this walking stick um when I skived it down. Let me see if I get it in the camera shot here. There we go. So it doesn't bulge out right there um, on the top. So yeah, that's a option if you want to. I'm losing my cap here. Do we have a metal hammer back here? We used to. We used to have a metal hammer. Somebody took our metal hammer. It's terrible. Hey, I've got a metal hammer here. There we go. All right. Seriously. Except where everybody can see it. You can use a, a a setter, like a post setter that has a, a divot in there for, for that, but I like the flat look on yeah, the rivets. Me too. Too. The only time that I really like the setter comes in handy is when you have to avoid other things. So like if you have mm. hardware really close, yep. like if this strap were right up against there and I was going to hit the hardware with my hammer as I hammer yeah. it, because it, like, that's really the only time where I'm like, yeah. okay, I'm going to use the rivet setter right? because I need to yeah. be away from my material. You have to be Other careful, way? too, because it leaves a ring around it sometimes. It can, yep. It um, so, yeah, you have to just be careful yep. with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you wanted that way? Yeah. Or switching on that? All right. Because I liked, because there's a seam that comes up where his beard doesn't meet. And I oh, like the seam to come down just kind of follows. There. Mm -hmm. there we go. All right. Symmetry. 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 So, we're going to go below the holes that are on the <laughs> stick for the lace. If you're not going to measure, at least put the stitch line. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we'll put that on there like that. And boy, that is a gap. I really measured that great, didn't I? It's going to pull. It's, it's going to pull right pull. up. You're going to force it that right thing, up. and it's going to be great. That's right. 
That's what I didn't account for. I didn't account for the thickness of that. Oh, and that too. Yeah. Yep. That, yep. that makes a difference. So there's another thing. <laughs> if you don't skive that piece down, it's going to create a, ba a gap well, on the back. I was so, going to say, what yeah. you might do is you might install that and then cut your final dimension. So especially mm. if you're dealing with a funky yeah. stick, install yep. that piece, leave it extra long, butt okay. everything up, and then, you know. See, we don't have to be perfect. Yep. We, all, we all learn. You guys appreciate this. Yeah. Or you can just use like. funny stick. That's right. <laughs> you could use the perfect stick. <laughs> like the perfect leather. Who is, like, what I is that? You, but your stick is hilarious. <laughs> all right, here's, here's the, uh, here's the, <laughs> Sorry. you guys are awful. So, here, here's going to be the fun part is trying to teach you how to do this stitch. This is called the baseball stitch um, because it's what they use on baseballs. What? Yeah. So. Where's my drum set? <laughs> but, um, he used to be a comedian that did, did magic. <laughs> Uh, what? <laughs> I told you not to tell people about this. <laughs> well, this cat's out of the bag there. Guy. Uh, it's, like... <laughs> it's all coming oh, out right now. Yeah. This this person can blow up those balloons and make balloon figures. And I don't even care that I just said that because it was the best thing that I had seen. I, I did he it has really good birthday lungs. Party, so I've got good lungs. And he can he can blow up that whole ridiculous balloon <laughs> and then turn it into a mouse. You or know, a cat, the guy that taught or a me dog, how to, and they all look the same. The guy that taught me how to do that is probably watching the video right now. So. <laughs> that was awesome. He made me a sword. Yeah, I did, didn't I? It wasn't it wasn't <laughs> there by the end of the night, but he made it for me. Those balloons are delicate. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. especially when they hit grass because yeah. grass gets sharp and or a needle. Yeah. Some kids or a cry. needle, yes. <laughs> Um, anyway, back all right. To the I'm going to show you what I did here. I'm going <laughs> to hook this up to the camera. Here, put it down from the camera. So okay, I'm putting zoom. it down from you the can camera. Zoom in. I'll just zoom in. Okay, all right. Can make it easy for you. Um, awesome. You might just do you want to slide over. No, I mean you can stay where you're at. No, we we slid. But it'd be good to move over if you wanted to be in the camera. Shot. <laughs> <laughs> the camera's connected to the ceiling. <laughs> hey, there we go. Hey, okay. So all I did is I went from the inside, um, not the outside. Liz is going to hold the end of the stick there for me. Thank you, Liz. You're welcome. So, and we just kind of cinch it up so that the thread is even. I'm going to go across like this and back into that hole on the other side. Basically, you just want your needles coming out on the inside of the leather. And this is going to, this is going to tie our first knot. I'm going to do the same thing with the other needle. Go across and then through here. Pull it through. And then the ends of my thread I need coming down toward the bottom of the stick or whatever you're wrapping. So, so right here, and then I'm pulling it tight. You don't have to go super tight with this because your next stitch is going to cinch that up. So don't tear your <laughs> leather on the first stitch. I've learned that the hard way several times. So. All right, so we'll get it right about there. Um, you can. You can try. You can tie a knot at this point. I generally don't because the, the stitches following will, will do that for you. Um, so you've got your two needles out to the side here. It's spread like this. You're going to take this one, go across and under the leather and through this hole. Something to keep in mind here is you want to make sure that you're always going over that piece of thread right there. Otherwise, your stitch will kind of look funny when you're done. Or if you go under, just always go under. Just, yeah, or always go under. You just always do it the same. The same way. It's yeah. just like with saddle stitching. You do it on the same same side of the, the thread. You just pull it tight. You see how it cinched up that top one right there? And we're going to use the same needle. Go across. Through. And through. Hey, Abigail's in the shot now. Hello. Hey, Abigail. <laughs> I got my water bottle. <laughs> I know. It's, it's like I know. It's like the color of mustard. <laughs> You're totally going to repeat this process Over. until the stick is done. Over. Not a difficult stitch by any means, and it looks really nice. Don't worry about uh, your last couple of stitches cinching up, because as you do this, it's going to tighten the last stitch. And this is where uh, Liz was talking about having a stout leather, not a thick one. Um, it's much not, or, a thin not a thin one, <laughs> <laughs> not a thin leather, because uh, it will tear the the leather if you're not careful. Oxford Excel is a really good one um, to use because it's it's stout and it holds together. I mean um, that also, yeah. You want to make sure when you're punching your holes, you want to give yourself some distance from the edge. Like I think you have a pretty good eighth inch there between the edge and your hole. Yep. Um, 
probably an eighth inch or maybe a little bit more, depending. Yeah. So that you've got, you're not, you're not pulling that through the side. You have to have something for it to grip onto. See that? Yeah. That's pulling up really nice. Yeah. Look yeah, at it's that. pulling up really nice. And this is, uh, this is why we bevel and finish our edges. It's because when you tuck this together, it gives the rounded edge and it squishes those rounded edges together and it just makes it look gorgeous. If we did it without beveling them, when you put it together like this, like these are two unfinished edges, it just it doesn't look good. Like you get all the fuzzies that are sticking out there. This just gives a very finished, clean look to the to the leather. Um, on this particular stick, I used a, uh, she used uh, white tokenol. I used black tokenol on this because um, the edges on the green leather um, were white in the center. Mm. So, and I wanted to make that disappear. So when you finish the edges with the with the black token all, it makes all that disappear. And so just makes it look nicer, professional. Always finish your edges. Yeah. Always finish your edges. Okay. Except okay. when you don't. <laughs> Except for when you don't. Cal. Cal said, and that's not all. And that's not all. <laughs> he is the one that taught me to blow balloons up. That's uh, what he told us. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome, Cal. Nice to meet you. So I feel like I have to explain the, uh, and that's not all thing. It was the very mm-hmm. first magic trick I ever learned. Is it like a Looney Tunes thing? It was a change bag. So it was the square piece of uh, cloth that as you turned it inside out, it changed color. And then you turn it inside out again, and it changed color again. And then again, and then again. And it did it like six or eight times or something like that. And I That's was, really what, six, seven years old at the time? And every time I changed the color, I'd look up at everybody that was watching me, and that's not all. And then I'd fiddle with it, and I'd turn it inside. And that's not all, and just over and over. So he always gives me crap about that. So every time I see him, he's... That's a really good one. Yeah. It's <laughs> hilarious, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, would ostrich... So Little Fear asked mm. if ostrich would be too thin. No, I would just reinforce this edge. Absolutely. So get a thin piece of veg, um, maybe a quarter of an inch wide. Yep. Glue it to your edges that you're going to be sewing through, and then punch your holes. Yep. Because the ostrich is very stretchy, and yep, so it's it like is. The, yeah. Um, so if, yeah, if you line really the flanky. back, yeah, maybe if you with line it or something. You yeah. Can, I mean, you could just line the whole thing. Yep. And that would be fine. Um, but ostrich would look really cool. We have some. Uh, I think they're Cayman um, spines or Cayman backs out on the oh, retail floor. Mm-hmm. I was looking at them earlier to to wrap them around and they were a little bit too stiff to wrap around yeah. the stick Especially but i really think if one. you twisted and yeah. you just went with the leather just put it like caddy yeah all, like a spirally yeah. you could spiral it all the way down yeah so something uh something like this and those oh man those tails are cool so if you wrapped it like back, this the came in back strap yeah yeah they're, they're pretty neat and they are that, really rather stiff oh though, man that would be neat yeah, and then did your uh, baseball stitch between there. I may actually try that on something um, and see it how they be look. It's really bony. Cause... You'd have to drill those holes. Yes, you probably would have to drill the holes. Maybe you just glue it down and call it a day. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Should just don't worry about the stitching. Yeah. yeah, boy, those Cayman scales are, are tough. Tough, tough, tough. Yeah. Yeah, so Let's this is there. this is going pretty good. So. Um, you can use a much thicker uh, wax thread on this, too. We sell different... Uh, I think I when I gave him the description um, some, for the video, I used some really thick stuff. I'm gonna say some artificial sinew would be pretty legit on yeah, this. Yeah, plus like, it would be maybe a little bit more like authentic. Like if you're doing like a walking stick reenactment type thing, artificial sinew would look really really good. Yeah, I'm glad you're holding the stick in the back. I had yeah. to create a jig at home to hold that for me. It was basically just a your, vice your grip. Didn't help you with that? <laughs> no, Aww. no. So. I do so many of these. I, I think she <laughs> she'd just gets sick of it. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. Right. Tina asks, when sewing, do you prefer the hole punch you use today or the diamond uh, chisel set? I prefer the hole punches just because of the the end look uh, to them. They To me, they just look cleaner, uh, especially when you're doing hand stitching. I just, I don't know, that's personal preference. Uh, see, and I, I prefer the chisel, so. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh. I think it depends on what the project is, because I like the, the angle of a diamond chisel that you get on your thread, but I also sure. like the, the, the hole. hole. Yeah. yeah. Especially with this baseball stitch, I think the hole works fine. The diamond isn't really going to yeah. change the aesthetic of it. Right. All right, we're on our last stitch here, and actually that came together a l- lot better than I thought it was going yeah. to down at the bottom. So. Leather stretchy. Yeah, it is. So on this last, last hole, you're going to do the same thing that you did before. 
stitch our last hole like this, pull it tight. And then what I do, instead of going across and under, I go across and over and through that hole. And this uh, will put your needle, or it gives you the same look as you got on the top stitch. One yep. straight stitch. Yep. And you could loop this a couple times if you wanted. Um, I don't find it's necessary on the ones that I do. Pull my needles off at this point, and I just tie a knot. Uh, so we get that on camera. Uh, just tying a knot through here. That will help it cinch up the rest of the way. And then I do a double or a triple knot in here. That tightens it up even more. And then I'll take my uh, my thread snips, and I go right up into here, and I'll leave a little bit of a tail if you're going to melt it. Otherwise, if you're not going to melt it, you get as close as you want. Um, you can too. Go out to here, and then you can use your stylus or needle or whatever you want, and you can push it up underneath here, and that'll keep it from the, the knot if it does come loose for some reason. It's not pull all the it, way out. Yeah, it's not going to pull all the way out. So you just tuck that up underneath there. There you go. It's wrapped. And there it is. So that is the handle wrap. It's actually pretty straightforward, and it gives a really clean look to the... Yeah, that looks great. Yeah, you can you can do it on whatever you want. It doesn't have to be a walking stick. It can be like the wrap handle of thing. your hammer. You can, yeah, you wrap your leg with it. Whatever you want. Yeah, just lash that thing right to your leg. <laughs> it's a different kind of leg wrap. That's right. <laughs> you know, if you had a wooden leg, you can oh, yeah. wrap some leather around it. What? <laughs> you can tool it up. Now, okay, guys, now tell me that if you had a, a leg prosthetic, that you would not want a really sweet, like, carved leather wrap around that. It, it'd be like a tattoo. Yeah, you could tell. Like, literally, because it's be skin. Cool. Yeah. You can just <laughs> it off, find another one on it, and change it daily tattoo. That should be a thing. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> should do that. Oh, man. No. I think that that's a cool idea. That's a, It's an idea. <laughs> Guys, help me out here. Come on. Oh. Leather carved leg prosthetic wrap? I mean, come on. I think, <laughs> yeah, I, it would be pretty cool. That'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> Somebody well, should like do that. Did, that should like be a business. Did, how you did say, you know, you could change it out every, or I, if you yeah. did it on tools, it's like a tattoo, you could change it out every Yeah. Time. Come on, guys. Put the, <laughs> it's leather. Like, it's, it's leather. We should do that. You're going to do a video on it now. <laughs> we have a question about your outfit, Liz. If you have a dress on. Or is it just a shirt? I have blue pants on. <laughs> Turquoise. <laughs> I, got, I got some new pants. Turquoise breeches. That's right. <laughs> Aren't they fun? Breeches. <laughs> All right. For the circle pouch, uh, the next uh, thing we're going to do is put the lace on it. So I, I just rough, roughly estimate going... We're going to weave some more. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be this long. It just needs to be about... Your 12 inch diameter, so I could trim that off. I'm gonna hold on to it and I'll show you show you why. Because you're gonna cinch this up, so yep. you're gonna need not as much lace as you think. So in from the front is your first hole, and it's actually gonna come out right here. Okay. And we're just gonna oh, there we go. All right, we'll just snake it in there. We're just snaking it in, and with the eyelets, it makes it really easy, and it actually goes pretty quick. So if it was just the the plain leather, like if you don't have eyelets. That's totally okay. Um, you just probably want to reinforce them because over time it will tear the leather because this is so thin. Especially if you plan on putting rocks in the pouch. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, so you could do a, a strip along the along the outside if you wanted to out of veg tan and reinforce it that way if you didn't have eyelets or didn't want to set the eyelets. So. Eyelets just look cool though. Yeah. And look at that. There you go. And that's the importance of doing uh, even holes. Otherwise, if we ended right here, you'd have one. one you know out, what so. I just realized would be really cool? Exactly. You know how we make all those valet trays? Yeah. You could do this as a valet tray and put a bottom in it, and then you could have like a little, like that could be That's your tray. That's true. Yeah, and you fun. could put your snacks in it. Yeah. So all that candy that I have from last week? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so it wouldn't be a good stick bag, but that's just a that's fun right. design. So at this point, I just cinch it up. No, it's on my desk, Susan. It's just I've been bringing my coffee to work recently, so it's in this thing instead of my thing one and thing two. Oh yeah, you're not using your. Mark. I know. Sometimes I do, guys. Seriously, sometimes I will. I will pour this coffee into that cup just to come to do the video because I know how happy <laughs> my mug makes everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I love how that copper 
Desert Cowboy, like the pull up on that just makes it look really cool. So, anyhow, so this is going to be the, the front of your bag. And back here is the back. And now we need to put two holes back here for the eyelet. So I always do this part first so that I know where to put the, uh, where to put the holes. So I'm going to leave it pinched right there. And we're, what, a couple inches down from the top? So, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to mark it with my, my fingernail again. And you can pull the whole lace thing out if you wanted to, but I don't think it's necessary for doing doing two holes. So, so roughly, we're right about here for the, right about there for the two holes. So I'm going to punch two more holes there. And just, make them like an inch apart, inch and a half, inch? Yeah, yeah, about an inch apart, so, uh, just enough to get around yeah. the around the stick. So. Here, one, two. All right. I'm gonna set two more of the eyelets. So remove the. Uh, all right. Put those in there just like we did before around the rim of the bag. Are you telling me that these eyelets are different than the other eyelets? They are not different. What? They are the same eyelets. That's so exciting. We need that. <laughs> We're really zoomed oh, in. Oh, there we go. There we go. It's fine. All right. We zoomed in for your stitching. <laughs> complicated everything. We got it. We got it's it. All right. All right. Okay. There we go. Boy, these oh, eyelids are someone setting <laughs> great. And now he moves the camera. That's right. <laughs> no, we moved. Oh, yeah, it okay. was fine because it's a dream. So I guess you probably could do that while you're doing all these. I just... That's just what uh, yeah, I've so done, it looks so. like they're just kind of centering mm -hmm. right below one of your cinch points, and then you just yeah, yeah. But it's whatever, you, yeah. Yeah, it's whatever yeah. you want to do. So at this point, um, I use another piece of piece of lace, or if this one, because this one's pretty long, you can always use the the trimmed part from this. Um, I just happen to have another one, and I go through the back and out through the front. And you got an even number of holes. And you got an even number of holes. That is true. So. Always even. <laughs> and that's all there is to that. So. At this point, uh, if we have like a um, piece of like cloth or paper towel or some, hey, let's use some token. Put it in there, and you can use that as your. We will be carrying token all on our adventure this afternoon, right. <laughs> just in case we need to finish edges. Helps you while help hiding. you form the bag a little bit. So here is uh, here's the, the point where you make a decision. It's so tall, but it's, it is on the table. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I really <laughs> felt like Gandalf there for a minute. I was like, this thing is taller than me. <laughs> oh, this is a good point too. Uh, your you want these to be opposite of each other because this is going to tie around the stick that's coming out the front. Um, wherever you decide to tie this off at is how far the bag is going to open up. So if you only want the bag to open up that much, like that, put your knot right there, and then you can trim the excess off here. Uh, if you want it to open up fully, just tie your knot at the end, and then you'll have a long dangling piece. So, did you bring so. beads in? Like, put beads on the end you of totally these. Totally could, yeah. Put a feather. You jazz it up for your cap. Anything that like, has pulling. I said we were going to jazz up this walking stick. Andrew. Jazz up the walking stick. There we go. That was my video title. <laughs> jazzing up the walking. A jazzy walking stick. <laughs> <laughs> so right, yes, good. here we are. Let's, let's hook this on. Let's look it on. I'm gonna trim those off. All right. So the back of the pouch right here, you just pull a little loop through, and then on the clip, you just clip it on. Maybe there we go. Clip, clip. And then I cinch it up like that, and then Liz can tie the back. And then you can put some beads on here. Yeah. Tie a feather on here. Some of those Lewis and Clark beads. Cool. <laughs> yeah, those would be pretty cool. So, yeah. There we go. Yeah. A rabbit's foot. A rabbit's foot for yeah. the yep. suggested. Oh, and I tied the front of the bag wrong. You don't want to tie these together because the bag will just like flop open. I always forget this part. Oh, no. No, there, there no Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of tying the uh, knot together like both of them like this, tie them individually. So just put a knot in the end to keep it going from going through the eyelet. And then to close the bag, just do a simple loop, tie it shut. And then you can do a bow or whatever you want. Or if you have a big bead, you can put a bead cinch on there, like one of those big oh, wooden yeah. beads with a 
Yep. Yeah. Yep. The so fun of, of working in the leather the, shop yeah. with a bead store attached. Yeah. You get to use all the fun stuff. There you go. And if you don't yeah. want this excess back here, you can always trim that off too. Yep. What if you took what if you took a strip of leather and you sewed it in the middle and you slid both of your things in there and then you got a leather slide? Yeah. 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 Yep. Or you could buy one of those little plastic clippy slides that are on bags. You could do <laughs> That's that true. too. Yeah. <laughs> You could but yeah, the there's a million options for you to. Oh, right. That's kind of cool looking. It's, it's like pretty that. sweet. Yeah. yeah. You can yeah, make the, a bag any size you want to. It doesn't have to be a round pouch like that. You can take two pieces of leather and put them together and sew around the edge. Yeah, flat pouch. Yeah, flat pouch. Yep. This one's going to hold your rocks better, though. Yeah, this will hold your rocks better. Yeah. Cool. All righty. Are we good on time? Wow. That was an hour. Three, that was like great. Right we got three minutes. What should we talk about for three minutes? <laughs> And one minute less. <laughs> anybody have any questions? Anything? Yeah, we have so, any questions or anything? Uh, we somewhere over the rainbow on Twitch was asking if we were actually live or not. We're actually live on three platforms. We are. Yeah, we are, we are here live watching you guys. Yeah. Watching us. <laughs> <laughs> actually watching ourselves because we're really pretty vain, and so we have yeah. our own monitor. That's why that I'm not looking look at, at the ourselves. camera all the time. I'm yeah. staring over here. It is hard to uh, do that. Could you go over where we got the walking stick or where somebody could get a walking stick? Sure. Uh, Creation Carvings. If you look them up on Facebook um, or go to Etsy and type in Creation Carvings or Walking Sticks, he's probably the first guy that's going to show up on Etsy. Um, or if you're local, yeah. come into our shop because yeah. we carry them. Absolutely. So you can so, come in here and get them. I, mean, I guess if you call yeah. them because they... Place to order for it on the phone. Yeah, yeah. Got, so. so we've got we've got our little wizard guys. We've got some bear carvings. We've got some yep. regular ones. There's a and whole tub of walking sticks. If you can zoom in on on this oh, that's for the car. overhead, this is his. Uh, oh, there oh, we there, go. That's upside down. Upside down. Hey, there we go. Just Maybe. Oh, there we go. Hey, look at that. Creation carvings. Yeah. So, so cool little uh, guy. Yeah, the stick was. Uh, I think these are forty dollars. Yeah, forty, yeah, 40 bucks. bucks. So not, not too bad. It's not bad at all. Um, what snacks would you put in your walking stick pouch? I Chris would, would put, put some beef jerky. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of beef jerky. Get some so. trail mix up in yeah. there. Tony, uh, can we stop looking at this? There we go. <laughs> Sorry, I was chatting to the chef. More important than us. So on Friday, Denny and I will be back with you. We're going to be finishing the fly rod case. Oh, yeah. um, so that's super exciting. And then next week, I'm really excited. We're going to be doing some airbrush um kind of tutorial so we'll have oh, the oh. like pre-videoed airbrushing um techniques and then in here we'll be assembling some items that we have airbrushed so clayton will be mm -hmm. for that next wednesday i'm kind of looking forward to that you can so. get some pretty reasonably priced airbrushes yeah i, I mean we sell one yeah. like 100 bucks yeah so not bad at all. hook it up to your air thingy or you can buy we have a tiny air compressor that they also sell that you can buy so yeah, yeah. airbrushing really just opens up a whole new world of dyeing um, options. So we're going to be doing some fun airbrushing with stencils next week on some tobacco lamb and make some rustic home goods. So, yeah. so we're doing yeah. Mikey ask, can the pouch be made with veg tan? Yeah. Yeah. It just has to be thin veg tan. <laughs> well, I can say, or we do sell the milled. So we have an import milled oh, veg in yeah. like the three to four ounces yeah. what I would use. And so that one's been put in a drum. It does kind of have a slight textured milled grain to it, mm -hmm. but that one would work pretty well. Yeah. Otherwise... pictures for some veg goat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, veg that goat. That veg goat be, is, yeah. is, mm -hmm. is pretty soft. Yeah. And it will break in. Like, it's probably going to be a little bit stiff to begin with, but it'll break in and yeah. just put some rocks in it. Oh, and something <laughs> I didn't mention, too, um, on these, like on this one um, that I'm sending to my friend Brian, uh, he wanted initials on it for his son. So instead of putting it on the actual handle itself, I make a little panel. And then I can put it underneath here. So you don't rub them off. Yeah. Yeah. That, that way your hand and the oils and stuff from your hand. So I'm going to put a little panel down there. Just another strip. And you do the exact same thing you did with the handle. A little customized. So. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Very nice. All cool. right, guys. Well, we Thanks will, if you don't know it yet, uh, Thursdays at 2 on Facebook only. We do live shopping. So Tony and I will be here tomorrow with you with whatever fun things that we can find. I think this week we're going to be doing some bundles and then some other stuff. So join us tomorrow at 2 p.m. on Facebook Central Time if you would like to do some live shopping. Um, and then Friday we'll be back at 11. Cool. So Thanks for joining us, everybody. Yep. Have a good day.